five enhanced clones. More capable than an army. Yet they exhibit a concerning level of disobedience in disregard for orders. Brad, just off the bat, um, I'd love to hear from you a little bit about how uh, Bad Batch differs from kind of the other Star Wars animated shows in particular, like particularly from Clone Wars and Rebels, how it's how it's different. Um, I mean, it's that's a that's a great question. The style is very much a Clone Wars style, but we have um, intentionally pushed the fidelity of everything um, in a design sense and the way it's filmed and animated and produced. Um, really. It, it's worth talking about that all of the animated shows always um, the way we approach them is more of a live action sensibility. So in a lot of ways, I'd say what they have in common is that Star Wars DNA. But, you know, each show has its own unique vibe. I think the fact that we're we're in this changing galaxy, the rise of the Empire, a time we haven't seen a lot in any other show or movie really um, in Star Wars is really interesting. It gives our show a different vibe, a different feeling. Um, and the fact that we're following these characters that are familiar to fans, the Bad Batch, but we haven't really seen that much about them, really gives us kind of a fresh, fresh start, and we can, we can, we can craft these guys forward in this changing galaxy. So I, th I think that gives it a little bit of a difference um, in that regard. Absolutely. Um, and on that kind of on that topic of the the, the space in which the story is taking place, um, Jennifer, from a writing perspective. Um, watching the first episode, I was kind of struck by the realization that, like, oh, I'm watching almost like a direct sequel to where Clone Wars leads off, um, which is a very dark place, right? Order sixty six happens, and it's a very different tone. So I was wondering whether how how the tone of Bad Batch has differed, and whether where it's set has impacted kind of the tone and the feel of the show. Yeah, we do start off in a very dramatic place, <laughs> um, but it really seemed crucial to kicking off this series and, and and telling the story of of these clones in the moment where everything changes for them and you know usually it's it's how you know a big moment because of what happens to the jedi but also <laughs> these clones who you know with their chips and and they execute order 66 but what that means for the bad batch and just the galaxy in general um obviously uh when the Republic falls and it becomes an empire, the Batch has um, differing opinions as to what what they should be doing. And, um, you know, it, tonally, I think the Mao is pretty indicative of the series because even though it starts off in, in this serious place, throughout the episode, you, you get to, you know, you meet Omega, you kind of see this dynamic between the two of them. And it's a lot of just exploring a changing galaxy and kind of, um, finding your purpose and and um, struggling to struggling to survive. Obviously in Bad Batch, you're playing all five of the 99, all five of our kind of main characters. Um, and I'm just fascinated by what that process is like for you in the booth, kind of bouncing off yourself. So yeah, kind of what, what's that been like and kind of what have the challenges been around, you know, playing five characters um, simultaneously? Playing the Bad Batch is a, it's a whole nother level of things that are familiar with me in terms of performing the clones in the Clone Wars. Um, but this is, uh, it's, it, it's that, but more so. <laughs> so it's, um, it's definitely more alone time in the booth, <laughs> less, uh, less ensemble recording and more of just me as the ensemble. <laughs> um, but, uh, but thankfully because of the, uh, of the terrific uh, directing and writing that, that um, that Brad Rao and Jennifer Corbett um, uh, oversee in the sessions is that it feels like we're telling a, a really great Star Wars story. It's just a little lonelier. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, speaking of origins of characters, um, I'd be remiss not to ask, um, obviously when the Bad Batch were introduced to us at the end of Clone Wars, we kind of know that George Lucas was involved in their inception and, and was quite hands-on in Clone Wars across the board. I'd love to know just a little bit about maybe um, his input in the show, or kind of how involved he's been, if at all. Um, no, we um, we talk about George Lucas all the time. Um, we work directly with Dave Filoni, and uh, Dave Filoni as as our you know fellow creator and definitely mentor and friend to to me and Jen on the show is our lifeline to George Lucas. So you know Dave will 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 be that that guiding light. But George Lucas himself doesn't 
doesn't personally work on the show, but we're all we all continue to be inspired by the original um, stories that he created and how good they are. We look at them and dissect them constantly um, down to the most granular detail. So he's definitely his his presence is there, but he personally doesn't work on the show. Speaking about that kind of those ensemble characters that you're playing, obviously um, the Bad Batch. What makes it so interesting is that we're seeing five clones who have you know, vastly different personalities um, and so vastly different voices. So I'd love to know. Um, what the process was around kind of discovering, if you like, each of the voices for kind of those those characters and how you came to kind of land on them. Well, when the characters were first presented to me, this was back in the Clone Wars days. This was, you know, this was when George Lucas was still involved and it's his idea and he was very much hands on involved with the Clone Wars. And um, and so it, it wasn't I don't think it was initially clear or or a lock that I was going to voice all of the Bad Batch. Um, I think they kind of threw it to me just because logically it would make sense if these are variations of clones just amped up but still clones. So there's still some reference there. So it would make sense if I can push this in, in these new ways that's a little further but still refers to the, to the basic clone. So initially... <laughs> Initially, it's kind of terrifying to be given an assignment like this because you you don't know if you're ruining it, uh, if you're if you're so far away from what a clone was that it doesn't work. Um, it, it it's and it's just it's an unusual um, assignment as a voice actor to just carry the whole scene or to carry much of a show where you're all the characters. It's like, can you do that? Does that does that actually work? And that was not clear. <laughs> so it, it, it was mu mu very, very gratifying to finally see um, when the the Bad Batch arc at the end of Clone Wars came out. It's like, oh, this actually does work. It really works, and I really like it. Um, just as a just as someone who likes Clone Wars and Star Wars, who likes to watch that stuff, I think it works and it's really fun. And so once we got back into the booth to to do a standalone series around these guys, um, then it was a matter of refining those those character differentiations a little bit, uh, getting a, a little bit more refined lock on them, um, and so that now it feels very natural and flows very naturally as I read through a scene. But it at first it it's it's uh, it it's 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 kind of a fraught moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of Omega, um, that was obviously like a great moment in the first episode, meeting this first female clone. It's kind of like groundbreaking in some ways. Um, yeah. Let's know a bit more about where the idea for like Omega comes from and, and how you kind of thought about that character in, in terms of, yeah, it's where it came from. It, I, I think I can pinpoint it to when we were talking about these elite soldiers and, you know, not even just the era that they're in, but when, you, when we've set them up as being so capable, what you can throw at them that would throw them off their game. And it sort of seemed like them having to be a guardian, it was a, was a natural fit because, you know, while they understand missions and they can do things tactically, taking care of a child and understanding a kid's needs and, and how to um, raise them in, in, a, in a universe where uh, they're not even used to taking care of themselves because it was the Republic that, that took care of them, like gave them fuel, gave them food, gave them shelter. And now they have to figure that all out for themselves and also for, for her. So that's sort of like, you know, once we came up with that idea, everything started to flow into place of like, yes, this is, it's going to be them figuring their lives out. And then also how to, um, how to protect her and, and, and raise her in, uh, in a very <laughs> difficult uh, yeah. environment. It's a bit of a kind of teasy question, but I'd love to uh -huh. know the, in, in, um, in episode one, we get introduced to Saw, reintroduced to Saw Gerrera and Tarkin, and we know that um, Ming Na Wen's character Fennec is going to be in the show. Is there any kind of other cameos or things you could tease in terms of um, cast? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. Uh, I will just say um, there will be other familiar faces that we will come across. We can't really say say who or when, but that is one exciting thing about this time period of the Bad Batch. There are a lot of characters um that are alive and doing things around the star wars galaxy so there's a lot of different possibilities um and yes all, all we can say is there will be other 
cameos we can't see exactly who. of course well like you said it's one of the things that makes this period so interesting is that so much is still at play on that note jen um i'm kind of fascinated with what makes this gap between episode three and four such an interesting place to kind of explore in terms of story so i'd love to kind of get your feeling on what makes it telling a story in this kind of in-between space interesting with something like bad batch i love the time period um because we you know, anytime we get to see the early stages of anything, uh, I'm all in for. And it's it's intriguing to watch the development of the empire um, and and how they eventually grow into into the you know the reign that it does. And um, it, but right now we're in this moment of like upheaval um, mm. and and you know and change. And it's not just politically, but also w with the batch because again, exploring how they went from really kind of being free clones in a sense with the Republic and they kind of just did their own thing to now like with the Empire, how they don't agree and how they have to go off on their own. But it's more about what their place is because there isn't a rebellion and they're not political guys. They were, they were soldiers. So what does that mean for them in terms of making a life for themselves and um you know their and their eventual evolution into you know where you see them in the mal and then where we're going to take them and their journey is very um we have it we have it laid out so we know where we're, where we're trying to go but it's just it's an interesting time right now because they're just they're just trying to figure it out for themselves and trying to stay alive Course. And I guess from that, I can take it from your enthusiasm that given the opportunity, I'm sure you guys would love to go on and make more, not just leave it at one season of The Bad Batch, that you'd love to go on and make more if the opportunity arose. We would love of to. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would say no to that question? It's so interesting because the story you're telling obviously builds on the building blocks that we get with like Rex and other characters throughout Clone Wars. Was that, was Clone Wars kind of something that you were kind of pulling from constantly as inspiration for this show? Because as I say, it, it almost does feel like very much in dialogue with where Clone Wars leaves us. Oh yeah, yeah, no, def definitely. Um, this, uh, The Bad Batch is um, absolutely a spiritual successor to Clone Wars. The style of it is definitely in the start in the Clone Wars style, although a little different, a little more fidelity. Um, and the, the characters that we see, the it's just really interesting even just to see regular clone troopers now become the face of the bad guys for all intents and purposes. And that shift, you see it um, in, you know the final season of Clone Wars. Some some of my favorite episodes. That last arc that that Dave did was so cool, and it's so chilling when suddenly the clone troopers become the bad guys, like they did in Revenge of the Sith. And so, but you only get a little bit of that in Episode Three or at the end of the Clone Wars. So for us to have that go through our whole, you know, several episodes, I'll say, is uh, is really interesting, really fascinating. So yeah, we definitely look at Clone Wars a lot and and borrow from that and carry that forward imagine um and then quickly as well um just to kind of i say simple um i was watching the back batch i kind of immediately you know you pick favorites and i'm a big record fan straight off the bat and i was wondering whether you as the man behind them all had a kind of maybe maybe not a favorite but someone that you love to kind of of the five that you love to, to perform well, to maybe. i like i really like record too i i, I really like because record brings the fun um but he he's also he's like super competent um and fun and, and that is a really great combination. I like all of these guys. I mean, you like all of them because there's something really appealing about a character that's really competent uh, in, in a supercharged kind of a way. That's a fun thing to watch. Um, but I like the laughs. I, I, I like laughter. I like comedy. And Star Wars has always been had fun ways of finding the comedy and the levity to balance out the the drama and the and the tragedy and the melodrama that's playing out and so records he he's a great uh counterbalance to uh the more dramatic forces that are playing out and which are quite substantial in this series <laughs>